This is Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala khayl al khalqi wal anbiya wal mursaleen abiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, most compassionate, all praises due to Allah, the Lord of all that which exists. May the prayers, may the praise and safety of Allah be upon our noble, I mean the best of creation and the best of prophets and messengers. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon his family and his companions and all those who hold on to his way. As for what follows, going back to our book, I'tiqad al-A'immata Arba'a, the creed of the four Imams. The creed of the four Imams. Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Abu, I mean, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal who was from that fourth generation, or part of that fourth generation, and between the third and fourth generation. And these are the preferred people whom we've been commanded by the Messenger of Allah to follow. And Allah Ta'ala had promised us in the Quran that if we believe like they believe, we will be guided and will cause splitting and separation as long as we hold on to that belief, which we have done the opposite of that majority of the Muslims today. So from there, we go. that's why we're going through this book and chose to talk about this subject matter because it talks about our belief that we have to return back to brothers and sisters in Islam. In this particular section of the book um, that the Sheikh covers is after we cover the first section. The second section is Al-Mabhath uh, al-Thani, the second research, the section of the book is the creed of Al Imam Abu Hanifa. That's what he put him in order. First he talks about the creed of Abu Hanifa, quoting from the books of the Madhab of Abu Hanifa, and then he quotes after he brings that in different areas of Aqidah, he brings that for each one of the other Imams from the four Imma, the four Imams of this religion, to show that they was upon the same belief and practice that we have to return to today. And this one, this section he's covering is Aqwal al Imam Abi Hanifa fi Tawheed, the statements of Imam Abu Hanifa in regards to Tawheed. And he says, first and foremost, his creed was the Tawheed of Allah, singling out Allah alone for worship, and clarifying a tawassul al shari legislative means to get to Allah. Wa ibtal tawassul al bid'i and the invalidating of innovative means trying to get to Allah. And that is using mediums to get to Allah. You got a legislative type, and then you have a innovative type. And what was the statements of Imam Abu Hanifa in regards to that? He says, number one, Abu Hanifa said, Allah, he says that Abu Hanifa says, it is a must, it is not suitable for anyone to call on Allah except with him and supplicating and the supplication has been given permission to be done towards him subhanahu wa ta'ala and that which has been ordered therewith. And he says, this is benefited from his statement, meaning Allah's statement, the exalted, which is uh, in Surah Al-A'raf, verse number 180, Allah Ta'ala says in that verse, and belongs to Allah beautiful names. So call him by it and leave off those who incline away from the names and attributes of Allah. They shall be recompensed for that which they used to do. And this verse is referring to um, the people who yulhiduna, who incline away from, I mean, they incline away from the belief of these four imams and the, 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 four, gener the four generations in relation to Allah's names and attributes. And he says, Abu Hanifa quoted that statement. That's the end quote of Abu Hanifa in the book, Ad-Durrul Mukhtar Ma'ahashiyat Rudd al Muhtar. Muhtar. Uh, he says that's the origin of where that statement comes from. That this shows Abu Hanifa belief was we all only call Allah call Allah by that which has been legislated and permission has been given to use from the book of Allah and the Sunnah of his Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he brought that ayah as proof because Allah says 
called belongs to Allah, the beautiful names, and call him by them, and leave off those who incline away from um, the names and attributes of Allah, and they shall be recompensed for that which they used to do. And then he says, secondly, Abu Hanifa says it is hated that the one who's supplicating to Allah to ask as'aluka bihaqqi fulan to say in sub, when supplicating to Allah oh Allah I ask you by the right of so and so or such and such or to say in that dua I ask you bihaqqi anbiya'ik I ask you by the right I ask you for what I'm going to ask you for Allah by way of the rights of the, your prophets or your messengers or I ask you by the right of the sacred house meaning the the the, the Mecca the Kaaba or I ask you by the rights of the sacred house nor does he say by the Mesha'ad al-Haram which is a place we go to when making the Hajj he says we don't supplicate these are not means to get a lot to answer your dua to make these type of statements the rights of the house of Allah by the rights of this no this is not the way of the believer, Abu Hanifa says. These are not mediums to Allah or to get Allah Ta'ala to get close to him and get him to answer your supplication. Now also, Abu Hanifa, he says in another statement that it is not suitable for anyone to supplicate to Allah except with what Allah has legislated. And he says it is hated that a person should say in his supplication by the things that connects the might of Allah's throne, of your throne, O Allah. I call on you by that. We don't say stuff like this. We don't say stuff like this in our supplication, Abu Hanifa mentions. Or, nor do we say, by the rights of your creation. We don't supplicate to Allah like that. And he also says, um, in regards to affirming the attributes of Allah and rejecting the belief of the Jahmiyyah, which was a deviant sect that rejected the attribute names and qualities and attributes of Allah. He said in that regard, La Yusafullah Ta'ala bi sifatin makhluqin that Allah is not described the exalted by the attributes of his creation of the creation. Wa ghadabuhu wa ridahu sifatani min sifati that the anger, Allah's anger, his contentment are two attributes from his attributes. Be like kafa without knowing how they are or who are qawla ahl sunnah And this is the statement of the people of Sunnah, wal jama'ah and congregation. We say Allah gets angry and he's, he, he, he's pleased. And we don't make the statement, His anger really means his punishment. And his contentment and pleasure really means his reward. And we describe him just as he has described his own self in the Quran. Like he says, he's Ahadun Summit. He is the unique and he is the one free of all needs and supplies the needs for everyone. That's a summit. And he does not beget, nor was he begotten. And there is nothing like in unto him. This is what we say about Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, Hayyun qadirun sami'un basirun alimun. That Allah is ever living, full or capable to do all things. He's all hearing, all seeing, and all knowledgeable. These are names of Allah. Yadullahi fawqa aidihim. The hand of Allah is above their hands. We say that like Allah said, and that's in the Quran. Laysat ka aidi khalqi. And we say, His hands is not like the hands of his creation. And his face is not like the face faces of his creation. So this is what the believers say about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the point about that, brothers and sisters, in Islam, the focus is saying about Allah what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about himself and not going beyond that and using those names and attributes that he say and understand it according to his Arabic meaning without trying to explain how it is or resemble it to his creation or try, nor rejecting them nor trying to interpret them outside of what they mean in the Arabic language and that's why he's saying this because that was the creed of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah which is the opposite of the Asha'ira which is a deviant sect who strayed in the names and attributes of Allah and this is the creed of the people of Hadith and this is what he's emphasizing we want to see more of this and it's important for us to know this because Allah wants us to put him first 
put him first. And it starts with understanding who he is, what his names and attributes are, and how to put him first. And how to exalt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only going to be done the way he legislated to be done. Not the way a person thinks or the way they feel or how they want to interpret or how their mind can capitulate. But no, rather the mind and intellect has been given to comprehend the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as has been legislated, as he says in the Quran or off the tongue of his messenger and his authentic sunnah according to that meanings of the Arabic language without trying to explain how it is or without trying to explain or without trying to falsely interpret them or to resemble them to his creation partially or completely nor to reject them like this and so this is paramount that we understand it as muslims because this is magnifying allah because you're only saying about him what he says about himself and this is important brothers and sisters in islam هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين والسلام عليكم